Hi, welcome to the COVID-19 Lake Norman North Mecklenburg briefing call. Today is Wednesday, June 10th. My name is John Bradford. I've been your briefing call moderator. We're in week 12, uh, small business owner, two companies right here in North Mecklenburg with about 40 employees between the two companies. And I'm a former member of the North Carolina House of Representatives. Uh, the purpose of these calls ac across the last three months has been to try to bring together healthcare experts, government officials, and other business leaders to provide regular COVID updates uh, to support the North Mech region during the outbreak. Uh, it is noteworthy that during the rest of phase two, we are only recording and uh, hosting these briefing calls on Wednesdays, and then we will end the calls once we reach phase three. So we are now on a Wednesday only schedule. We've been running three days a week uh, since we kind of started, but now we're pivoting to one day a week on Wednesdays. Uh, just uh, in terms of some total case numbers, uh, 1.9 million cases across the U.S., 110,000 deaths. Uh, that's 550 new deaths since yesterday. Uh, and then comparing that to last Wednesday, because again, we're now on a every Wednesday schedule, um, it's about 5,000 new deaths. We were at 105,000 deaths last Wednesday. We're at 110,000 deaths now. Uh, the heat map shows North Carolina continues to sort of be in the middle of the pack as it relates to uh, the number of cases and deaths by jurisdiction. Uh, we've talked a lot about FEMA rumor control, and I've consistently checked their website for rumors. There is a new rumor out there, and I always share the new rumors. And the new rumor is I got a call, text, or email saying that I could get financial help. Is it legitimate? And, and here's the fact. There have been reports that scammers are pretending to be the government, contacting people by robocall, text messages, and other outreach. These scammers say they can get financial help during the COVID-19 pandemic, and then they ask you for money or personal information, like your social security number, bank account, or credit card. This is a scam, and the scam is in bold letters. You can see it right here on your screen. So please do not trust anyone who offers financial help and then asks for money or personal information. Uh, you can go to FEMA, and they have some links to get to the Federal Trade Commission scam page, and it has some tips of how to avoid scams uh, through phone, text, and email. So, uh, and you can file a complaint through the Federal Trade Commission. So this is a new rumor, uh, and we've heard about these, but just wanted to share that with you today. Uh, in terms of North Carolina, 37,000 uh, confirmed positive cases, 1,029 deaths. That's up from 921 deaths last Wednesday. And in terms of hospitalization, we're at 774 currently hospitalized, and that's up from 716 last Wednesday. Uh, we are in almost at the end of our uh, third week in phase two. Uh, phase two uh, is tentatively supposed to go through June 19th, to July 3rd, but of course that's contingent on how the numbers are looking. Um, you know, we have opened up uh, a lot of things, uh, restaurants 50%, um, uh, personal care and grooming and uh, massage, et cetera, indoor and outdoor pools at 50% capacity. Um, and then the gathering limits was increased to 25 people outdoors and then 10 people uh, indoors. Um, there was a bill, House Bill 536, that gave uh, um, any food establishment, uh, whether it be a private bar, private club, uh, if they have an outdoor area, it would have given them the ability to uh, operate at 50%, just like restaurants. Uh, it was supported by partisan in the Senate, um, and it was also passed in the House, uh, but it was vetoed by the governor, unfortunately. Uh, he vetoed that bill. It was intended to bring parity to these businesses, uh, but it's been vetoed, and there, there probably are not the votes there to override the veto. Uh, if you're curious how our local officials right here in North Mac, uh, Senator Natasha Marcus voted yes to support these small businesses, and Representative Clint, Christy Clark voted no against supporting these small businesses. Uh, and now I've heard a lot about gyms, fitness clubs, health clubs. These would be yoga studios. Uh, we have a lot of gyms or those types of businesses in North Mecklenburg. And again, it's not just the big gyms. It's also these smaller studios. And there is a bill, House Bill 594, that ran in the Senate yesterday. It did pass. And what it does is it would temporarily authorize existing indoor or outdoor exercise facilities, gyms, health clubs, fitness centers to open and resume operations as long as they meet specific criteria. Uh, it did pass the Senate 36 to 13. It looks as though it was along party lines. Senator Natasha Marcus voted no against that bill. It's calendared for the North Carolina House uh, tomorrow, I believe, uh, June the 10th. And, of course, we'll see, you know, how will Representative Christy Clark vote? I guess we'll see. Uh, I suspect she's going to vote no, but I guess we'll find out. Uh, but if you have an interest in any of these clubs and these, these uh, health care facilities and it's important to you that they reopen, then I encourage you to reach out uh, to Representative Christy Clark or Natasha Marcus accordingly. Um, I, I thought this post was interesting. 
Uh, Representative John Bell, um, he said, every state bordering North Carolina has reopened bars and gyms. Um, and he shows Virginia, South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, and then North Carolina. And there's a graphic here on the page, and it's showing that every state bordering North Carolina has, in fact, reopened their bars and gyms. Now, these are not full capacity, by the way. These require safety precautions. They are reduced capacities. So, I mean, there are specific uh, data or specific items that these places would have to still enact to open. But the point is th other states around us are allowing these businesses to open. And the question is why, you know, are they, are they continuing to shut down? Because they too have bills. Uh, phase three, obviously we're not there yet. Um, you know, it's all depending on the numbers. Uh, but once we get to phase three, then that will, of course, even reduce some of the restrictions we have. So, but right now we're still in phase two. Remember the three W's, wear a face mask or a face cloth covering, uh, wash your hands and use hand sanitizer and wait six feet apart. Let's not lose sight of doing these things. And remember, we, we were smart, we social distanced and we helped flatten the curve and we still need to be smart and continuing to do this uh, because it's just, I mean, it's, it's a choice, but I think it's a wise choice. Uh, face shields, if you need a face shield, there's a company in North Carolina, $8 a piece. Uh, you can order these. Uh, you can see it's layered, manufactured and consulting. The website's on the page. And if you need face cloth coverings and Dara Mills, a North Carolina company, you can order adult and youth face sizes. And there is a flag version available. They print an American flag on it. And I have one. They look great. And uh, you can go to shopandaramills.com and there you can see the phone number on the screen. And then the last slide before we get to our guest, Mecklenburg County, we're at 5,606 positive cases with 115 deaths. Uh, on June 7th, we were at 113 deaths. And just some friendly reminder about really the most vulnerable uh, population. Almost all de deaths were attributed to older adults greater than 60 years old. Only eight deaths were between ages 40 to 59. And all deaths except one occurred in adults with underlying chronic illness. So that was all deaths except for one with folks who already had some sort of underlying chronic illness. And this data, this last one, which is highlighted on your screen, nearly two out of every three deaths, or 66%, was attributed to active outbreaks at long-term care facilities. This statistic has changed. It was reported that it was 50%, basically you know, one out of every two deaths. Now it's been reported it's two out of every three deaths. So once again, it's our responsibility at all ages to try to not get this thing to give it to someone else, but the most vulnerable who are, are really getting hit hard from a death perspective are folks uh, you know, in, that are more senior in age. Uh, so uh, every Wednesday, now we're on a Wednesday schedule, we've been joined by the United States Small Business Administration, the State Director of North Carolina, Thomas A. Stith III. He's with us today to give us an update from the SBA perspective. Uh, Director Stith, the mic's yours and thanks for being here. Uh, John, thank you so much, and thanks for the opportunity uh, to uh, continue to provide uh, very critical information. As we mentioned uh, last week, there was pending uh, legislation uh, that would impact the Paycheck Protection Program uh, that has passed both houses of Congress now, signed by uh, the President on last week. The Paycheck Protection Program Flexibility Act of 2020 uh, has made uh, some significant modifications to the Paycheck Protection Program in response to assisting uh, our small business community. Uh, the Paycheck Protection Program, I'll say in the beginning, still has approximately $120 billion remaining. Uh, these new modifications uh, will hopefully increase those small businesses and nonprofits and faith-based organizations uh, that may uh, see uh, the Paycheck Protection Program as a benefit uh, uh, in, in general. Uh, one issue in particular, uh, the eight-week window, uh, the review period for forgiveness has been significantly expanded from eight weeks to 24 weeks. Uh, so now Paycheck Protection Loan recipients, uh, once receiving their funds, will have 24 weeks uh, to expend those funds and then review uh, for forgiveness. Uh, the threshold for expenditures on payroll-related expenses has been changed uh, from 75% to 60%. And now you can spend 40% on other allowable expenses such as utilities, rent, and lease payments, uh, as opposed to 25%. So now that ratio is 60-40, 60%, -40, uh, 60 uh, as a minimum for full forgiveness, uh, forgiveness of full expenses, in addition to a 40% threshold for rent and lease payments. Uh, loans made after June the 5th will now have a five-year 
term as opposed to a two-year term at 1% interest. Uh, those loans or existing loans that were made before June the 5th, if uh, the borrower, small business or nonprofit, uh, in conjunction with their lender, uh, uh, mutually agree for an expanded term, they can go up to five years as well. Uh, but those loans made after June the 5th are now um, uh, uh, for a five-year period. Uh, and so we think these are very significant changes. Again, uh, there is a uh, approximately $120 billion uh, balance left in the Paycheck Protection Program. A very key date to keep in mind with this legislation and, and guidance uh, that will uh, also be made available uh, for forgiveness. One point to remember, uh, June the 30th, uh, 2020, so in just about approximately three weeks, no new applications will be approved uh, in the Paycheck Protection Program. So we strongly uh, recommend businesses and nonprofits, faith-based organizations uh, to review now uh, whether this may be an initiative that will be beneficial uh, to their organization. Because after June the 5th, as, um, as we stand now uh, with existing legislation, uh, their uh, new applications will, will no longer uh, be approved. Uh, there is a uh, discussion uh, literally today, uh, the U.S. Senate Small Banking, uh, Small Business Committee uh, was discussing potential additional uh, assistance for small businesses. Uh, that's still currently uh, being debated in Washington. Uh, so we, uh, there is potential for uh, existing funding as we move uh, into a stronger recovery position. Uh, but uh, that, uh, again, is just a debate at this point. Uh, and finally, just to recap, current um, numbers for both PPP and IDLE uh, here in North Carolina, again, uh, uh, inched up a little bit. Now we have almost 114,000 uh, Paycheck Protection Loans approved in the state, still a little over $12 billion of financial assistance to our small business community. Average loan nationally um, is continues to creep downward, meaning Smaller businesses are participating about 113,000 to 112,000 on the average. Uh, and the idle loans, uh, we, we uh, still, uh, with the, the last week's update, uh, but just, just to remind uh, uh, listeners, uh, a little over 30,000 advanced idle grants have been made uh, for $128 billion in North Carolina, and a little over 6,500 uh, uh, 6, uh, loans, uh, full IDO loans for $620 million. So again, significant financial assistance to our small business and nonprofit communities here in North Carolina, and just strongly suggest in particular with the new changes um, with the PPP program uh, to uh, encourage uh, individuals to review that $120 billion still available uh, as legislation currently stands applications or uh, acceptance and approval of applications will end on June the 30th. So John, thank you again for the opportunity uh, to provide information today. Thank you very, very much. Those are, those are actually significant updates for sure. So thank you for communicating that to our listeners and uh, I will share that as well. So thank you, Director Stitz, and we'll uh, talk to you next Wednesday. Uh, moving on to uh, doc, you bet, Dr. Jack Faircloth, uh, local medical doctor with Atrium Health. We call him uh, Dr. Jack. He's been with us since the beginning. So, uh, Dr. Jack, if you're on, the microphone's yours. Yeah, thanks, John. I appreciate the chance to be back with you guys this week. Um, I wish I had great news, but unfortunately, North Carolina and especially Mecklenburg County is standing out um, as a place of um, increasing numbers. So, um, I don't know if you caught, but the White House has declared Mecklenburg County as one of seven counties that need special attention uh, due to the growth of COVID-19 cases. Uh, so I do agree that we the big increases we've had in positivity rate is not due to uh, just the number of available tests because our percentage of positive uh, diagnoses of coronavirus has gone from the high seven percentage to now 9.7% over the last few weeks. Um, and that is number two in the nation as far as a state to be at 9.7%. Um, unfortunately, we lead the nation in new hospitalization rates. So this is, uh, we're concerned. Um, 
these numbers do not look good uh, since we've been opened. Uh, it looks like they're all attributable to decreased uh, social distancing and decreased uh, staying at home. So we, um, you know, we're definitely tracking this. The, um, the other <clears throat> big increases are that um, the three out of four uh, statistic of new diagnosis that are aged 20 to 59 that you mentioned, it's interesting to note that over a third of these are Hispanics and especially young Hispanic. Uh, so we do hope that, you know, the um, trend there starts to reverse. There, there's something uh, uh, going on there that's uh, sort of out of proportion than the others. Um, it is encouraging that you, uh, you mentioned the two thirds of the deaths are long term care facilities, so less in our community uh, population than we thought before. Um, it's also encouraging that um, it is still a, a fatality rate that's centered around chronic illness and extreme age or age over 60 to 65. The hospitalization rate is still uh, linked to age as well. So, one out of 10 new cases of coronavirus in North Carolina have led to hospitalizations, and the majority of those have been to those uh, over 60. What else can I mention? Uh, so, yeah, so I guess just to uh, tell you where we are with testing, there's been a lot of uh, uh, input from national public health experts as to the number of testing that we'd need to do as a nation for a week in order to have um, a safe um, ability to be at work and be moving around our community. Um, and that number is now moved to 6 million per week. Um, that means that we are at probably at 50% of testing capacity nationally. The good news is that locally, uh, we're still able to get our testing done uh, with or without symptoms uh, by calling our doctor or using one of the atrium health, Navon health sites, or even the health department. So we have good, good testing in our area compared to nationally, and we're making strides nationally towards um, being able to test more. The, um, you know, the summary is still, like you said, to remember the, the W's, wearing a mask, wait six feet apart, wash your hands. Um, I also want to add that um, answer your phone is now in Mecklenburg County and especially North Carolina, uh, because of our high inc increase in infectivity rate, we're using contact tracing. And there was a report today out from the Mecklenburg County um, uh, head of um, public health, uh, I think her name is Gibby Harris, uh, the health director. Um, she said that people are just not answering their phones. So they're trying to do contact tracing on these new cases and they are, patients are either hanging up on them or not not picking up so um, we need to be you know careful with our distancing and wearing masks and cleaning but because of our high increase rate i would say also um, that we need to be uh, uh, reachable by phone and that's really it i hope to have better statistics next week and and um, you know really just um, hate that i had to share all that today yeah, Dr. Jack, I mean, thank you. I mean, that's interesting data. I think it's just a friendly reminder. I mean, we're in phase two. Phase three is contingent on you know, how phase two goes. So, you know, we may, you know, what may happen is if folks aren't careful and cautious and aren't practicing these three W's and are being careless, then it could extend phase two even longer. So we really need, I mean, I don't know if I'm summarizing that correctly, but it seems as though that we all have a responsibility to you do what we need to do to be, still be safety and cautious uh, because, you know, we know this is here without a vaccine. It is here. Uh, and while the death rate, I know, hasn't alarmingly gone up because um, you and I talked about that, that, one death is still too many, but it's still that vulnerable population. So those folks definitely need to take greater precautions. And even as things open, you know, people still have the freedom to, to make the choice to absolutely stay home if they feel they're vulnerable and they should. Right. Right. Yeah, the, the well, bulk of the new the bulk of the new cases are those three out of four are under sixty, but we and so we have to do our part for those that are suffering the bulk of the uh, the morbidity and mortality. So yeah, good good summary.
Yeah, very good. Okay, thank you, Dr. Jack. Uh, this is exactly why we have you on these calls, so can't thank you enough. So uh, moving on to uh, Mecklenburg County, uh, our commissioner at large, uh, Ms. Pat Cotham. Uh, commissioner, if you're with us today, we'd love to hear an update. Oh, hey, John. Um, Hi. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. Thank um, you. All right. Thank you. I've, I've enjoyed listening um, to the other speakers. Um, you know, uh, Dr. Jack talked about some of the things I was going to talk about, and I, I, I have to say, I think he was, I didn't really agree with some of the things he said. I think he was a little too kind because um, he said we had good testing and um, <clears throat> You know, I think that we haven't had enough testing, and um, I think the you know we've heard from the governor and the the state health department that um, they want us to raise our testing. I think they've had a goal of doing like two thousand a day, and they want to raise it to twenty thousand a day, which um, is a huge undertaking, and we would have to have a whole lot more sites to do that, and um, because I think that is something that. Uh, and I think also when the um, the the woman who's over this for the federal government, I think her name is Hertz H I R Z, but she's been in contact with our with the state health director, and they've had a lot of talks about Mecklenburg County, and I think our health director has been involved, but they really want us to raise the testing, but that's going to be a huge undertaking, and um, we haven't heard any plans on exactly you know, where the new sites would be and um, and also the cost of that. Um, they did say at the meeting the other night that, you know, they would be free, but, you know, I guess we'll wait and see on that. Uh, but the numbers certainly are not going too well for uh, North Carolina. Um, uh, Dr. Jack talked about the Hispanic population and we are concerned about that. And we have tried to, um, have you know a lot of uh, translations done in our documents and working with in the Hispanic community with different leaders, uh, different faith organizations to try to get the message out. But um, I do think that communication continues to be a, a problem there, and um, and the results you know kind of confirm that as well. Um, okay, I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, uh, the contact tracing, uh, Dr. Jack talked about that, that people are not answering their phone. And, you know, to me, that's just kind of an excuse. I, I heard that from the health director. And, um, but we didn't really get a chance to, you know, ask a lot of questions about that. Uh, but, you know, a lot of times we try to reach people by phone, maybe, and, but you don't just give up, you know. I, and people who are lower income people, um, often their phones don't work because, you know, they're struggling financially, uh, but they can text. And so I, I, I have asked questions about that. I haven't gotten a response. You know, are they trying to do texting um, to individuals? And um, also, you know, we can also use the, the, the mail, you know, just the U.S. mail. Uh, I just think that you know, they don't answer the phone is that's not a good enough excuse. Uh, yeah, I'm always about, you know, you got to try harder. So um, I will be interesting to see if they if they do try harder. I hope so, because I think the contract, the, the tracing is is really important. Um, OK, a couple of things that uh, we have talked about at the um, the Board of County Commissioners. Um, well, we had a meeting the other night and we did talk about um, we've kind of at the prior meeting we we had a a push about um, developing a task force and uh, to work on the the recovery of of the from the pandemic and you know just to give you a little background the manager had a has had a business roundtable where she was talking to businesses about recovery and what would recovery look like and how do we help each other and, and what can we learn from each other. And um, she was trying to get information, you know, and she had uh, large corporations on that, on, and she continues to do this, this board. And she's had large corporation, you know, the banks and I think Duke Energy's on and the big corporations as well as some smaller companies and the minority chamber representatives, the leaders of the minority chambers 
are on it. So we do, you know, have like representative like 8,000 small businesses at least, and we have the hospitality industry. So it, that is a, that's been a good mix. And um, I, I, I can't say we've heard a whole lot of their, we've heard some of their results, but I know she'll, you know, she'll give us a report. But you know, the commissioners wanted to do their own thing, and so they wanted to have a task force. And so suddenly we're we're going to have a task force. And But it seems like it's going to be different um, than the, the managers. And, and I kind of thought that it was going to be more of a, an extension of that one. But it seems like it's going to be more focused on the, um, uh, the pandemic revealing uh, more to the public about the inequities in in our in society and how um, there are certain segments of our and here in Mecklenburg County we always talk about the crescent which is like the half moon above the city where we have more vulnerable populations and um, people that have you know that are lower income who have more uh, health disparity who often don't have insurance and and so this task force is is going to be working um, focused on on that po on the population that is vulnerable, and I, I don't think we. I worry that we we're doing this too fast. I don't think the community really understands exactly what this is, and now they're suddenly asking for people who they want to have 23 people on this task force, and they want people to apply. And they want to get it all done, um, you know, by uh, sometime in the beginning of July. And uh, I just, I just worry that it's um, that it's going to be a rush thing, and a lot of people that may have interest in something like this won't even find out about it. And by the time they find out about it, that it could be closed. So, um, you know, I appreciate that, you know. Um, a couple of my colleagues were trying to do things, but you know, a lot of times, if you put things together without a lot of input from the public and a lot of discussion by all of the members, I mean, we did have some discussion, but it wasn't, you know, an in-depth discussion. And and our uh, chairman, you know, at our meetings limits our time to to speak, and um, I guess he's trying to be efficient, but. I don't know. I, I just am kind of concerned that this is kind of rushed. So, you know, I'm hoping that I'm wrong and I'm hoping that this will be helpful. Um, but and I'm, and I'm I'm curious if any of you even knew we were doing this. Um, um, but we are doing it and um, people can go to our website and apply to be on it. And um, and then it, it also says that the board is going to pick two two of the members to be leaders of it. So uh, we'll see how that works out. I hope it works out well, and I hope I'm um, you know, wrong about my concern uh, that it's kind of been, looks to me like it's kind of been put together quickly. Um, and um, so I, I hopefully we'll have, I know we'll, we'll talk again next Wednesday, hopefully we'll have some more, up, I'll have another update then about the, um, the testing increase and what does, you know, what does that look like? But, um, you know, I, I continue to, you know, ask people to do, as John says, about, you know, this, the distancing and uh, everything else that we're supposed to do. And I'm in that vulnerable population. Um, I, I like hearing that I laughed when someone said earlier, you know, the extremely old population over 60. So <laughs> I'm in that population um, and I'm almost 70. I'm 69. And I do have heart disease, so I am one that is trying to follow the rules and a shelter in place, and I only you know go out when you know sparingly so i but other people I talk to are are doing the same thing so uh I'm trying to stay healthy, and I hope you and yours are too so that's my um report from Mecklenburg County. Okay, great. Thank you. And we'll, we look forward to hearing from you next Wednesday as well. Thank you, uh, Pat. Thank uh, you. Moving, you're welcome. Moving to the town of Cornelius, uh, Cornelius Mayor Woody Washam. Uh, Mayor, the microphone is yours. Thank you so much, John. Uh, happy to be here today. And uh, Pat, just so you know, I'm right there with you in that age category. So let's hope for the best. Uh, so uh, an update on Cornelius is as of 6-7, we had 95 cases in our town. 
Uh, 67 of those were at Autumn Care. Uh, Autumn Care does still claim 19 deaths, which is terrible, but uh, it, it at least isn't increasing anymore. Uh, we do have some good news, and uh, we had to search hard for some good news, but locally, the outbreak at Autumn Care uh, has been officially declared closed by Mecklenburg County Public Health. And uh, what that means is that there is no um, evidence of continued transmission within that facility. So that is awfully good news to our community. Uh, the way that's measured is as of 28 days, uh, there have been no new cases. Now that could change with an additional case or two popping up. It could be reclassified, uh, but right now the news is good. So, uh, we continue to try to reopen our town cautiously and carefully. We'll have our, our first live board meeting this coming Monday, the 15th, uh, uh, coming from town hall. It actually will be closed, but we'll also have our first public hearing. Uh, folks will line up uh, outside the, the chamber at a safe distance, hopefully with masks uh, and maybe some minor testing going on there as well and will be allowed in to speak at our budget public hearing if, uh, if they desire, uh, one by one, one at a time. So that will happen on Monday. Also, our summer camps are, are in motion. The uh, uh, training and uh, orientation of the staff that will be operating those has already begun. Uh, it's uh, interesting to see all these folks that will be helping spread out in our uh, community room there. It's a pretty big room, uh, but they're spread out all over the place, which is very appropriate with masks on. So we hope that goes well. Uh, we hope we don't have any issues related to that. The summer camps will begin in Cornelius shortly. So I think the uh, 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 registration is still open, but uh, as of now, uh, they will begin at a soon to be date. And I think uh, potential is you possibly still could sign up uh, in the classes that may remain open. So town hall, we will uh, begin opening the offices again on Monday the 15th, which matches our comeback date for the town board. Uh, so we'll move that forward on the 15th and uh, begin slowly but surely to get our public buildings back open again. And I do believe that is all I have today. Thank you very much, John. Thank you, Mayor. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. I appreciate you. Uh, moving to the town of Huntersville, uh, Mayor John Anarella uh, is with us today. Uh, Mayor, the microphone is yours. Uh, hi. Uh, hopefully uh, everybody missed me last week. I'm sorry I couldn't attend, but uh, happy to be here today. Uh, yeah, just a few things. Uh, one, uh, we had a, a very nice uh, peaceful demonstration last uh, Sunday organized by some students. Uh, from Pine Lake, and uh, I think we had about almost a thousand people. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Cornelius uh, PD as well as Charlotte PD uh, for uh, helping uh, with that. Uh, fortunately, it was very peaceful, and I think it was productive. Uh, I was out of town, so I could not attend, but um, happy that that uh, occurred uh, peacefully. Uh, in addition, obviously businesses are uh, continue to uh, slowly return to normal, whatever that is. Uh, my wife and I were in Florida this week, and it's just interesting, you know, being in a different state and trying to live within their rules, which are different than our rules. Uh, although their gyms are open, uh, as you drove into Florida on I-95, uh, they were flagging people from certain states. Uh, and I guess uh, asking them to quarantine and, and all. Um, you know, another thing that's uh, been interesting is uh, some places in North Carolina are having baseball tournaments and softball tournaments. And, um, you know, depending on how you look at uh, 25 people on a field or 25 people in the uh, bleachers or 25 people in the visitors' bleachers, uh, they're interpreting the governor's orders. Uh, differently. So, you know, once again, we're at that point where we have a lot of confusion going on because uh, we're not really sure uh, how to apply the rules. Um, but 
hopefully uh, things will continue to get better in, in North Carolina and Mecklenburg County. And I do find it interesting, you know, over the last uh, 60 days or so, we've been pretty good here in Mecklenburg County and, um, and the state relative to our peers. And maybe it's just the, the law of large numbers and that we're just now getting the same results uh, as our other states. And, you know, as we look back on this six months from now, nine months from now, uh, depending on how we went into a particular stay at home order and how we came out of it may not have mattered as much as we, we think it was, just, you know, the, the people that were going to get uh, sick, uh, whatever the percentage, uh, we're going to get sick one way or another. And uh, it was interesting. I was talking to uh, an elected official, a state le elected official on Friday. And uh, this person mentioned to me that there was some concern within the health organization at the state that we didn't have enough infections initially and that this was going to go much longer in our state uh, because of that, because they had closed down so much so quickly. So once once again, we're just kind of working our way through this. And as they say, uh, building the airplane as we're flying. Um, but yeah, be cautious. Please go out and shop, though. We need to get our economy moving. And um, that's really about all I have, though. Very good. Thank you, uh, Mayor. We appreciate you. And uh, thanks for the updates. And you were you were okay. missed last week. Uh, so okay. uh, yeah, okay. the town of uh, yeah, you bet. The town of Davidson, uh, you know, don't have any updates. Uh, you know, just uh, continue to invite folks, and unfortunately, don't have anyone to join us today. Uh, so now we are going to move uh, CMS District One Board Member Rhonda Cheek. Um, she was joining the call, so she hopefully she's on by now. Uh, Rhonda, are you there by chance? I am. Yes, it's a big well, day. We started our started graduation um, in the district, and a lot of kids are. Um, doing their virtual ceremonies today, and then we're also doing diploma distribution ceremonies uh, starting today. So lots going on in the district. That's wonderful. Um, any yes. updates for in calendar year stuff? Any of those discussions happening? Yes, so um, if, the, if any people out there have not talked to their schools, the schools are um, needing them to turn in any materials and, and, and um, collect back computers and that sort of thing, so make sure they do that. Um, secondly, we, um, as, as announced, the North Carolina High School Sports Association has announced resumption of the sports. Um, so they're allowing schools to start resuming on June 15th. We wanted to take time to work with our county partners and everybody since Mecklenburg County has been a little bit more hot um, with COVID than other areas. We're not going to resume our sports programming until July the 6th when we have time to really study and um, make some good decisions on how to do that as safely as possible. That's first. And then, um, as a lot of people probably have heard, we got a very large, <laughs> very large packet of information from the um, state superintendent and, and the DPI on how to different measures of how we would reopen our schools, different um, up options, and um, all that is under review right now. It's too much to go into any detail, but it's everything from a full-on opening to to continuing remote learning. So we're um, just kind of going to dive into all that, and our staff is continuing to work on options and contingency plans for whatever level of opening we're allowed to have. Very so good. Unfortunately, still all up in the air, not a lot of answers, but still a whole lot of questions. Yeah, no, I understand. Well, we appreciate you sharing that data, and uh, and congratulations to Mason on his graduation as well, Rhonda. Thank you. We'll be watching at 4 o'clock today, and we'll be driving up to pick up a diploma at 2.30 tomorrow, and there'll be a lot of celebrating going on all over the, the county in the next few days. Yeah, and, right, and rightfully so. Well earned, and uh, our, our thoughts are with all these uh, kids as they graduate, that's for sure. Uh, so thanks again, Rhonda. You. Uh, you bet. Right. Moving to the uh, Chief Executive Officer of the Lake Norman Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Bill Russell, who's been uh, steady Eddie on these calls. Every single one of them always first in, first out. Uh, Mr. Bill, the mic's yours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. And Ron is not the only one excited. Uh, the mayor, Washam, and I are just coming off of a ribbon cutting. Uh, new business that opened up here in Cornelius. They actually opened up uh, in, in January, February, but <laughs> and then then we were prevented from having a ribbon cutting. So it is the first ribbon cutting the Lake Norman Chamber of Commerce has had since February. So a real milestone, and, and very thankful for it. 
Uh, John, we, we traveled around this past Friday to, I, I think, close to a dozen businesses, the, the Thursday before that, to a dozen businesses, uh, calling on not just retailers, but some small businesses and one accommodation, and asking them, you know, what, what did they do leading up to uh, the, the stage two? And then now how are they making it a safe environment for their customers or clients or guests? Um, the exciting thing was seeing uh, customers returning to these businesses uh, and the precautions these business owners are taking to make sure it's a safe environment. Again, we have talked about it before. If you're a business that hasn't started back yet, we have a restart guide, restart LKN on our chamber website at lakenormanchamber.org that gives you a step-by-step -step procedure of how to make sure that your office or your store is a safe environment for your customers, your employees, um, and we also have a list of the cleaning companies on our website as well. But um, I, I just been it's so grateful walk, watching these business owners talking about how excited they are to be back at what they're doing, uh, what they do very best, and that is to serve their customer base. And uh, that's just so exciting to see. We had a wonderful program today too. The news this past Friday that the unemployment rate dropped to 13.3% when many people thought that the unemployment was going to continue to rise was welcome news. You saw the stock market uh, react to that. The S&P yesterday had pretty much wiped out all of the uh, and returned to where it was in, in February. So uh, we've, we've seen some great gains in, this, in the stock market because I think everyone is anticipating things are going to get better. Uh, they are returning to somewhat of a sense of normalcy, as you were talking about earlier. Uh, we had a program today where we had Joshua Doby with North Main Financial uh, and Richard Pappas, who is a community banker with First National Bank. They were talking about the market and what some of those signals mean for businesses, not just nationally, but here at the lake. And, and uh, of course, Richard was talking about the the PPP, the, the uh, Paycheck Protection Program, and the monies that are still out there available to businesses and some of the things that they can be doing. Uh, again, we, we are we're still continuing to see some businesses because they're not eligible yet to open up. Uh, and, and I think Mayor Annarella just talked about it, the inherent unfairness of some of those. Um, I don't know if I shared this before or not, but we've got a, a uh, martial arts business that is located in Morrisville. And, and when we think of martial arts, John, you, you and I think about just defending ourselves, you know, whether it's Taekwondo or something. This particular facility works with Parkinson's patients. And because of some of the things that they do and the techniques, they're able to rehabilitate Parkinson patients. And this one particular patient, they had actually got him out of the chair, unassisted, walking across the room. But because of what's going on, He's completely lost ground, and their family can't even get this gentleman out of his chair. And, and so they're losing ground with all these patients. You could say, well, maybe this business would be eligible for a waiver. No, nope. they've, they've written the Department of Revenue. They've written the Department of Commerce. They're working with uh, Senator Sawyer. They're working with uh, Mitchell Setzer to try to get some type of waiver, but they've been shut down by the government. And what I think is so such a tragedy is we, we have the right to assembly. Uh, peaceful protest is what this country is founded on. It, what's so unfair is seeing our governor walking arm in arm with protesters, taking his face mask off, not exercising social distancing for the photo op of it. But yet we won't allow these gyms, Pilates, fitness firms, the very businesses that need to be open right now so that we can get back in shape and fight off any time of type of infection. It's just unfair. It's unfair that, that some uh, businesses that serve alcoholic beverages like restaurants and then others that, that like the Kilted Buffalo in Huntersville, which could socially distance and, and make sure people are spaced out, they can't open. It's just the unfairness of the whole thing. And while every state around North Carolina is now open for business and we're still continued to be locked down and awaiting what's going to happen in, in phase three. So again, uh, I, I'm excited that uh, some of our businesses have been able to open back up. It's really good to see business returning at the lake, uh, but we still have a ways to go 
and I'm looking forward to the day that everybody is able to return to their job. Thank you, Bill. Thank you for the uh, the remarks and for your leadership, and um, and it was nice to hear a business being celebrated day of the ribbon cut. It's a nice job. Thanks, John. So. You, you bet. Uh, you know, here's the uh, Huntersville Regional Chamber, just as a, another local resource. Uh, Visit Lake Norman is open for business, so uh, you know they they do realtor packets. You know, for new people coming in, people stop by, uh, pick up things, and uh, they're they're a wonderful group of folks. They have a they're a small group with a mighty punch, is what I like to say. So they do great work. So they're open. And this, I want to thank all of our panelists. You know, we've been doing this, like I said, 12 weeks. This is our 12th week, so three three months. We've had Congressman Greg Murphy on multiple times and then a lot of the folks you heard today have just been regulars and I just this would not have been productive without them and as you can see we're still getting good information now we'll continue these every Wednesday through phase two uh, I record and post these calls every Wednesday uh, elect Bradford you can follow me there on Facebook uh, John Ray Bradford on Twitter uh, our next briefing is Wednesday June 10th uh, if you have any questions or emails you want to send me, lkntogether at gmail.com. That's lkntogether at gmail.com. We're stronger together. Uh, I want you to take care of yourself, take care of each other. This does conclude today's briefing. Thank you for listening.